Yes, hello everyone. My name is Vera Trainer, and I am the current president of ISHA. And of course, one life passion is science. And I do love working with close teams of collaborators who share some similarities, but also have different expertise. And I think with all the struggles and divisiveness in the world, collaborations are a way for us to enhance our cultural, scientific, and personal understanding of one another. I think we can work together almost like a sports team with everyone playing in a different position, but toward a single goal. I think this is when science is at its very best. And recently, I've also become very interested in effective, clear, concise climate communications. And I would like to use these communication tools to address how each of us is going to make a difference in preserving the world for the next generations. And finally, for my life's passions, I, I really love hiking. I grew up hiking in the Alps in Germany uh, with my grandparents. My mother is German and she, and she met my father at the end of World War II when he played the trombone for the Air Force Band in Germany. So my love of hiking I'm able to do and I'm able to uh, experience hiking in Seattle. And so I want to show a short video of a hike that I did this weekend in the Olympic Mountains in Seattle. So for fun, I like to go hiking in the mountains. Right now we're in the Olympic Mountains and we just saw some elk and we've got maybe another five miles to go today before we camp and we're headed toward Cat Basin. And right now my friends and family are picking huckleberries along the trail. Well, I've been lucky to have many great experiences, but I thought you'd be interested in hearing about a great experience that I had in science. Um, and this was a true aha moment during a scientific conference. It's just, I think, a really rare moment where I just had this, this flash, this light bulb go off. So I had just finished my postdoc studies um, on nerve channels, including sodium channels, with Bill Catterall at University of Washington. And you all know that saxitoxin acts like a cork on a bottle to block sodium influx through channels into nerves. Well, I was lucky enough to go to the Tasmania ISHA conference, and I heard Monica Brussel give a talk. She showed pictures of softshell clams from areas in the sea that had experienced saxitoxin in the environment. So they'd been exposed to paralytic shellfish toxins. In the lab, when they're exposed to toxic alexandrium, they were able to burrow in the sand. But in contrast, clams from areas that had no experience with saxitoxin in the environment were not able to burrow when they were exposed to toxic alexandrium. Their limps, their siphons became limp and they became paralyzed. And so this is where my aha moment came, where I knew because I'd studied sodium channels that this was probably due to a mutation in the clams that were from areas that had experienced saxitoxins. So, and I was just, I had just started my job. I was a young, young, early career scientist like many of you. And so I decided to reach out to Monica Brussel and email her. And I was very nervous about that, but I thought I'm just gonna be bold and I'm gonna try this because I just think this is such a good idea. So together, she was very kind and together we wrote a proposal together with Bill Catterall, my postdoc advisor. And a few years later, 
we published a paper in Nature documenting, documenting this sodium channel mutation. So I think this is an example of where science was at its most exciting and, and best, where you have an idea, you reach out to colleagues who you know, maybe you're a little bit bold, you think it's a crazy idea, but you believe in yourself and you do it. So as far as my personal life, I have two children who, uh, with my husband, we've adopted from Guatemala. I'm super proud of them. My son, Roberto, he is now just starting college. He's studying chemistry, even though he says, mom, I'm nothing like you. And he's also playing division three college baseball. My daughter, Stephanie, is 14 and she just started high school and she's a great soccer player. So in some ways, I'm also a soccer mom. I'm driving her to her games every weekend and some evenings. Um, and I am a pet owner. I have two fuzzy Maine Coon cats, Hunzi and Gracie. And I love dogs, but we travel, so I'm not able to have a dog uh, right now. Um, I was on a research cruise in 2015, and I was getting ready immediately after the research cruise to go to Vladivostok, Russia for a Pisces meeting. And I got an email while on the cruise saying, well, make sure your visa is correct in your passport because as a US citizen, I need a visa for Russia. And I have no access to my official passport. It's in a safe and it's under lock and key. So I get off the research cruise and I remember it was a Friday and I'm looking all around for my passport, can't find it. Finally, somebody finds it and I look inside the passport at the date for the visa, and it is the date after I'm scheduled to arrive in Russia. And I think, well, what are they gonna do? Kick me out of the country? So I fly from Seattle to Seoul, Korea, waiting in Seoul, Korea, Korea for many, many hours. And then finally I get the flight to Vladivostok. And I'm there with several colleagues and we arrive in Vladivostok and we get to the customs man who's checking the visas. My colleagues are ahead of me and I'm the last one to go through. And he takes the passport, he looks at the passport, he looks at me and he goes, when are you scheduled to arrive in the country? And I said, well, I was on a cruise and the visa, it's the wrong date. And he goes, why are you here one day early? And I said, I'm sorry, it's, it's a mistake. And he goes, you have to sit over there. So I sit and sit for many, many hours. And I remember sitting in the seat and it's just a TV with all of these models back and forth, male models, female models, back and forth on the runway. And finally, this man comes and says, you come. And it was me and another guy from NOAA who had to go with him. And he goes, you right, why are you here one day early? And so we went to this podium and I had to write, I'm on a research cruise, I'm very sorry, the visa had the wrong date, I didn't realize. Anyway, went back, sat in our seats, and finally, maybe another hour passes, and I hear, flight, last flight to Korea is boarding now. And I'm thinking to myself, well, if they don't call us soon, we're good to go. We're just going to sit here. And by now it's maybe seven in the evening. And I had even said, can we just sit here until midnight? And then the visa date is correct. Well, they didn't think that was funny and they were not smiling and they were not happy. So finally this man comes back and he said, you come. 
And so we both go and we're there at baggage claim. And I see these familiar faces of people from Pisces who are trying to get permission for us to come. And I think this is good. They're taking us to our luggage and we're going to be allowed to stay. Well, the man hands me my ticket. He goes, here is your ticket. Passport is on the plane. Goodbye. So there we were had to fly all the way back to Korea. No chance to go into Russia. I guess my colleagues had been at the bar for a couple hours and then they gave up. So anyway, back to Korea, we were so tired. Finally, we found a way to get back the next day. So $500 later, we were able to get a flight on Vlad Air, which I later found is one of the most dangerous airlines in the world, but we had no choice. Flew back to Vladivostok, same guy was there at the customs desk, looked at the passport, stamped the passport, there I was in the country. So now it's funny. It wasn't so funny when it happened, but there's my story. I think most important is to find people who truly advocate for you and are collaborative, not competitive. If you find that people don't support you, well, it's time to find new collaborators or new friends. And I would say treat yourself like you would treat your best friend. Find time to exercise, find time to get out in nature or do whatever brings you energy and explore hobbies other than science when time allows. Life is too short for struggles. Try to find your way out of them. And finally, talk less and listen a lot more. And I would say that, yes, I've had difficulties. Over the last two years, I've lost a lot of sleep. I won't go into detail about what the problems were, but I've faced persistent discrimination and harassment in the workplace. It's been very, very unpleasant. What I learned from this experience is that, that I have to stand up for myself. And I'm doing this because I don't want my students or my colleagues to suffer through the same situation. So I've chosen to try to resolve this for the future. In, two, in today's workplace, there are still situations that require pioneers, people who are willing to stand tall to fight difficulties. So that's what I have to say a little bit about myself. Uh, I want to thank you for listening and feel free to reach out to me anytime, email me to ask for advice and please enjoy the conference. Thanks again.